Hey, this is Digital by Computing. Today we're gonna to be talking about whether you should buy a SAN or a NAS, a storage area network or a network attached storage. So as you know, my name is Emilio, I work in the IT industry, and today we're talking about a SAN or a NAS. You are probably watching this because you are in an organization, you're setting up a lab, you've got a home lab, you've got a small, medium, large organization, you're part of an IT team, and you want to know, should I buy a SAN or should I buy a NAS? What is the difference between a SAN or a NAS? A NAS is what's called file-based. So it is completely uh, dependent on SMB and NFS protocols, acting as a file server, while a SAN is what's called block-based. Block and file are two different sorts of technologies, and generally when you're hearing the term SAN, we are talking about block-based. When you hear the term NAS, you're talking about file-based. It stores any data that you particularly want to store in a centrally managed location. What you will do with a NAS is you will have all of these disks that you put into a physical NAS, and then you combine these disks together into what's called RAID groups. You create storage pools, you create volumes that are then presented to a network. Volumes you can create are, for example, SMB shares, NFS shares, which essentially are the combinations of those disks that are the RAIDs and the storage pools that you've created that are made up of physical hard drives that are inside the NAS. So in the olden days, you would just have a file server that you'd have a physical disk uh, you know, connected inside of a server in a PC, and that can become your file server, and that's where you store all of your data. What you do now is you have what's called a NAS, and that replaces your traditional file server, and now you are managing all of your files and everything all within a hardware-based storage network. A SAN is essentially a block of disks, very similar to, this, to the NAS, from a hardware perspective, you've still got a physical piece of hardware that contains multiple disks created into different RAID groups, into different pools, storage pools, and then are created into what's called a LUN. So unlike the NAS where you have a, a, a volume or a SMB or an NFS share, on the SAN side, you've got the, those group of disks that are created in what's called a LUN or a logical unit number. This is a group of disks that are then presented to a particular service. Generally, a, um, a NAS will be used, as I said, for file servers. A SAN will be used for services such as a virtualization environment, perhaps VMware, etc. In short, a SAN is presented to a server or a service as if it's a disk that is locally attached to the computer. From the operating system point of view, it will see it as if it's physically connected into that server or that computer. The two most common protocols that are used by SANS are iSCSI and Fiber Channel. So you can provide these LUNs to a server. Let's talk about VMware ESXi, for example. I've got a VMware ESXi server, which is used for creating virtual machines, and I can, I can dump those virtual machines or store those virtual machines on a LUN, which is presented to the ESXi host over iSCSI or over Fiber Channel. From an iSCSI perspective, I've got the two ends, so my SAN, it has my LUN, and then I've got my VMware side, uh, I create what's called a path between those two using iSCSI initiators. It's using a WWN or an IQN, these are the sort of the unique identifiers. The iSCSI initiator interprets the connections between the two physical devices, and then I just provide that LUN from my SAN to my host over iSCSI. Uh, there is a number of, uh, you know, prior backend configurations that need to be done on the SAN and on the uh, VMware host to allow the communication to happen between the two. But once that is established, you then present it over iSCSI through the iSCSI initiator. 
once that is presented to the VMware side, I then can create what's called a data store from that LUN, which then I use a just, as just a bunch of disks to be able to then go and create my VMs. iSCSI generally can be transferred over the Ethernet protocol. So you can use existing um, Ethernet switches. So you've already got your network switches, such as your, you know, your Cisco, HPE, those sort of vendors, which do already network Ethernet switches over RJ45 network cables. And you can pass the iSCSI protocol over this IP internet protocol packet. So you don't need any other fancy equipment. You just really need your network switches to be able to pass your iSCSI traffic over. The alternative to iSCSI generally is fiber channel. This is more of a dedicated fiber connector between your SAN and your server or your ESXi host in this example. Uh, you, you can connect a SAN directly to an ESXi host uh, over fiber channel. Uh, the fiber channel card will be required on the back of a SAN and on the back of an ESXi, ESXi host. And then you'll have a fiber channel cable connecting the two together. And then you can establish the connection that way. Commonly in a larger organization, you're going to have fiber channel switches where you are running multiple fiber channel cables between the SAN, between the storage processes on the back of a SAN into these uh, fiber channel switches. And then from you know, multiple HBA cards or fiber channel cards on the back of uh, your servers, your ESXi hosts, for example, into these fiber channel switches. And then you create what's called zones between these channels to let the, um, the you know, I guess the, the fiber traffic know where to go and what traffic to flow from one device to another. You can also set up multiple levels of redundancy this way over the fiber channel switches using these different zones to let the traffic know which way the traffic should be flowing. If you're going to be going down the replacement of a file server, or you just need a place to just dump files, something that people in an organization can just connect to, access their data, access your documents, etc. You may want to be going down the NAS space. Uh, if you're going down the space where you need a place to be able to build uh, you know, virtual servers, to be able to build databases, those sort of things, you may want to be looking down the SAN space, which is more block-based. Uh, it's presented over iSCSI, presented over Fiber Channel, versus the NAS space, which is presented over SMB shares, file level base, or NFS shares, just presented out to the network. What you will find is that a lot of devices nowadays, well, a lot of hardware, can provide the functionality for both SAN and NAS. So historically, a SAN device used to be a physical piece of hardware with one purpose, which was for SAN only, and a NAS would be just for NAS only. But you'll find that a lot of devices nowadays can be configured with both SAN or um, NAS capabilities. So you could buy yourself a Synology NAS, right, which you think is a NAS, you can actually go and create your, your storage pools and create your SMB and NFS shares on that Synology NAS. But then there's also an area where you can actually configure your storage pools and create your LUNs within it and present them over, you know, over iSCSI uh, to a VMware environment, which acts then as your block-based SAN base. So you can actually have your storage device split and share the services of a NAS or a SAN. That's where you then have to really determine whether you need to buy two separate devices or whether you can just buy one and then split the services. Historically, I think it's generally best practice to have one for each. Uh, that way you're splitting up the services independently because if you lose the one device and you lose both your block base and your file base um, hardware and functionalities, you know, all up. So I generally like to split them up and have one device that is dedicated for NAS. I can use all of the storage, all of the disks, I can expand it as I need just for a NAS. And then similarly on my SAN base, I can just expand it and I can have it just dedicated for my block base. But there you go, that is the summary of the two and the purpose of the two. And hopefully that gives you a bit of a better guide or understanding as to which device you should be buying. Either way, I hope you found this video helpful. I would love it if you commented below. Let me know your thoughts. If you need, it. If you need any help, let me know as well. And that is it for now. I would love it if you subscribe as well to Digital by Computing and follow my channel for a whole bunch of more videos like this on other technology related items. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.